So this is meant to be a video walking you through first some basic factoring problems, just to take them slowly and think about the way uh, that factoring works. I think you do the steps and then building into some of the more complex uh, types of factoring problems that you have in your chapter R homework. So I wanted to start with something basic. I've got three X to the fifth minus X squared. So the common factor here is X squared. We know that because the two, the exponent is the lowest exponent. We always factor out the lowest exponent. So in this case, that's X squared. Uh, now what's left would be three X cubed minus one. Now the reason that you get that three X cubed minus one, that might be a part of the process where you can kind of complete this step here without thinking very carefully about the, the details of what you're doing. Um, but I wanna talk through the details because it'll help with the more complicated problems. So we had three X to the fifth and you factored out X squared. So that factor of X squared cancels and when you subtract two, that leaves a power of three here. So that's why you have three X cubed. And then with the uh, one that's here, it's because we had x squared in this position, but we factored out x squared. So you can always divide to figure out what your remaining factor is. So that's where we get the one there. Okay, so maybe trying to apply that to a um, slightly more complicated problem. So what if you have negative exponents? Uh, say you have 2x to the negative 3 plus x to the negative 5. So now with negative exponents, it becomes a little more difficult to figure out what the common factor is that you should factor out. Now remember, it's always the lower exponent. It's always the lowest exponent that you should factor out. So you're looking for the lower value out of um, negative three and negative five. So the lower value is that negative five. We should factor out X to the negative five. Now to figure out what's left, um, writing in this division, may not be uh, the best way for me to explain this part. So another way of, of thinking of the way, um, the way that we figure out this uh, remaining factor is you should subtract, and this is important enough that I'll put in writing, um, subtract um, the power that was factored out, factored out uh, from the original exponent to figure out what the remaining power is. Um, so in this case, from where I am here, uh, I need a pointer. Uh, let's see. So you had, let's get a lighter color. Um, we had x to the negative 3. You factored out x to the negative 5. So the remaining power, there's the 2 here, x to the Let's see, so the remaining power will be the negative three that we had there originally minus negative five. So that's actually negative three plus five. So that's positive two. So the exponent here should be two. And then, oops, let's see, so I have plus, and then for this part of the expression, so it was x to the negative five, we factored out x to the negative five, so there's just one left over. If, if we factored out this entire term, then we just put a one placeholder there. Um, now, a nicer way to write this, uh, it's best to take in those expressions with negative exponents, so like this x to the negative five, and move it to the denominator and write it as x to the positive five. So this is two X squared plus one all over X to the fifth. That's what this simplifies to. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna squeeze in maybe one or two more examples on this page or in this video. Um, let's see, so what if, oops. Let's take something even more complicated. Uh, let's say we have fractions in the exponent. So say you have five Z to the negative one six uh, plus three Z to the positive one six. And we wanna factor that. So start by factoring out the lower exponent. So you have to ask yourself, all right, what's the lower power out of negative six and positive, sorry, negative one six and positive one six. So the lower exponent will be negative one six. 
Now we figure out the remaining factor. Remember that you subtract the exponent to find the remaining factor. So I have five, and then here we had z to the negative one sixth. That's exactly what we factored out. So there's no power of z left over. So it's just five from that first term. Okay, and then I have plus three. Oops. Now we had z to the positive one sixth here. I factored out z to the negative one sixth. So the, the power that's left over here will be the original exponent one sixth minus the negative one sixth power that was factored out. So that actually becomes a plus, right? One sixth plus one sixth. So that's two sixths. Oops, which reduces to one third. So this is the one third power. And I know these are all getting a little bit messy. So I'll write my final answer maybe a little more clearly here. Ah. So this is five plus three z to the one third in the numerator. Uh, this term with the negative exponent should be moved to the denominator. So this is z to the positive one six on the bottom. And that would be your final answer. Okay, building up to just one more problem here, and I'm going to clear the screen. So this last example is similar to your chapter R homework. Ah, homework uh, problem. Let's see. I described it over here. Uh, I'll do one that's uh, similar to problem number 18 in your chapter R homework. So this is in my math lab. Uh, so what you're given is x plus 4. Well, and this is just my version. Remember, these problems are algorithmically generated, so your values might be slightly different. Uh, so x plus 4 to the 3 halves plus x times 3 halves oops, times x plus 4 to the positive 1 half. And this is with x greater than negative 4. And I'll talk about why they put this on here um, in just a minute. Uh, okay, but so in simplifying this, let's take the same old uh, rule of thumb. So there's this common factor of x plus four. We've got it here and here. So we know we can factor out a power of x plus four. You always factor out the lower exponent. So when you compare these exponents, three halves and one half, one half is the lower exponent. Okay, and there are no other common factors. So that's what I'll factor out. Now what's left, so first in this first part, I notice that I have x plus four to the three halves, that's a different power. So I'm gonna have some power of x plus four left over. To determine the exponent that goes on this, uh, I take the original exponent, which is three halves, and subtract the power that was factored out, which is one half. So that leaves me with two over two, which is one it's to the first power. And if the exponent's one, you don't really need to write the exponent, but just uh, to emphasize what we're doing here, I'm gonna write that. Now we've got plus, okay, x times three halves. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply straight across. So that's three times x over one times two. So I'll just write those two. And then here, x plus four to the one half, that's exactly what was factored out. So there is no power of x plus four left over um, from that term. So this is, that's it for this expression. So we've got x plus four factored out. Now, what we need to do is combine the terms that are inside the brackets here. So that's an added step in this problem. Um, so I've got that same old x plus four to the one half outside. Now, adding the expressions that are inside, um, notice that this one's over two. So if I wanna combine these, these terms, x plus four plus three x over two, I need a common denominator. So I'm gonna take, ah, sorry, the x and multiply numerator and denominator by two. So I'm gonna write that as two x over two. Okay, so same thing with the four. If you multiply numerator and denominator times two here, then this is eight over two. And then plus that three X over two. Oh, 
sorry. Okay. There we go. Uh, Okay, and so now inside the brackets here, that's all over two. So we can write it as a single fraction with two in the denominator. Now combining the terms in the numerator, you've got two X plus eight plus three X. So you can combine the two X and the three X and that's five X plus eight. And then times that X plus four to the one half, which can be written as the square root of X plus four, the one half power is equivalent to the square root. You can write it either way, and it's the same thing. And so this would be your final answer. Now, real quick, I said that I would get back to this x um, is greater than negative 4. So the reason for that is because you have this 1 half power. So this, like I just said, can be written as the square root. Sorry, my stylus is running out of battery, so it's making it a little hard to write uh, clearly. Um, but this x plus 4 to the 1 half is the same as square root of x plus 4. And so for that to be a real number, x has to be greater than negative 4. So they're just, this is not something you have to worry about um, when you're solving the problem, but that's why they put that there is because since it represents a square root, um, they want you to have a positive number under the square root.